Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, this is uh, week three. Okay, and today we're going to learn sharing stress. But before we do sharing stress, I'm going to tell you about your term test one. Term test one will happen online. Okay. It's going to be online. It's going to be on February 5th, 9 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., which is on a Saturday also. Uh, you have two hours, 30 minutes to do two questions. Okay, you're given two questions. Submission deadline is 12.15. So I've allocated 45 minutes to upload answer. Okay. After 12.15, we will not accept any more answers, okay? Topics to be covered will be from week one, week two, week three, and also very important uh, webcam has to be turned on. Okay, so on the other side of the computer will be me and the TA, Invigilating, we do not record. I repeat again, we do not record. Okay, uh, Khan, is it open book? I don't know, man. I cannot see. So you decide what you're going to do. Okay, <laughs> if you open your book, I also don't know. Okay, so you decide what you have to do. Okay, so there's no way for me to check. Okay, so you decide what is best. Okay, for you to do well in your term test. Okay. Even if I see you uh, looking at your book, okay, I will not know. Are the other test open book? Uh, when we go to term test two, maybe I will give you a formula sheet or textbook. Okay, once we get there, then we, we decide a, a deal. Okay, any other questions regarding the term test? Okay, so the term test, everything will be like your quiz. Everything will be like on avenue to learn. Yes, okay, you're going, to, you're going to see your quiz soon. Uh, the TA has not finished marking yet. Okay, once the TA finished marking, I'll upload everything for you, okay? Right. So today is uh, sharing stresses, okay? And sharing stress is one of the most difficult topic. I repeat again, it's one of the most difficult topic in structure analysis, okay? A lot of universities avoid teaching this topic, okay, but McMaster, we don't avoid teaching difficult topics okay i mean they do teach but not to the depth that we're going to go for okay so shear stress uh stresses acting parallel to the surface Okay, to the surface. So now, if I'm going to draw a, a cantilever beam, okay, I'm I'm going to construct a, a cantilever beam. So I first construct our transformation. Hey, Eugene, uh, you muted yourself. Thank you for letting me know. OK. OK. So how long did I unmute myself? Just for a few seconds? Yes. OK. So this is a cantilever beam. We have point A over here. And we have point B. Okay. And then uh, this beam, I'm going to put layers. Okay. I'm going to put layers. So you, you can imagine that each layer is a piece of plywood. 
you can you can you can you can use the analogy you can imagine okay and then we are going to put a lot a uh, 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 load p at one end okay so the surface that we are calculating the uh shearing stress is on this surface that i'm highlighting in yellow okay so that is the surface that we're calculating the shear stress okay and then the distance from a to b is what we call our length okay so in general there are two modes of failure okay there are two modes of failure under static loading so the first mode is normal stress yeah, normal stresses induced by both uh bending uh excel loading which we have just covered okay excel loading and bending moment we have not done bending moment yet okay. so excel loading we know that stress x is equal to p over a okay we just finished that okay we just finished a series of that bending moment which is equal to stress x is equal to uh, mz over izz multiplied by y okay this we will cover in uh week so this is week three four five week six and week seven okay we'll cover that on week six and week seven then the other mode of failure so number the first one here normal stress the other one is shear stresses. Okay. Shear stresses induced by the uh, shear force. Okay, by the shear force or torque. So we are not going to cover torque. We are just going to cover the shear force over here. Okay, we are just going to cover shear force over here. So let let me draw the free body diagram of the cantilever beam. So far, anyone any question? I'm not muted, am I? I'm still okay. Okay. So let's let's look at before I go on. Anyone any question? Okay, no. So we're going to draw the free body diagram. Okay, we're going to draw the free body diagram following the same uh, transformation. So we know that over here, okay, we have a load uh, coming down in P. So this will be our point A, our point B, and we have a reaction going up in A, Y, right? And because the P multiplied by a certain length, okay, so we have a moment coming down this way, and the moment is equal to uh, E times L. We have a moment, which is moment about the at point B. So this is equal to P times L, right? At point A, there's a counter moment. Okay, uh, sorry. We have a counter moment at point A. Okay. Yeah. 
so we can usually construct uh, two diagrams, which you all have heard before. If not, this is the first time it's okay. It's what we know, we call our shear force diagram. Okay, it's what we call our shear force diagram. So if we were to construct our shear force diagram, it will look like this, okay? So we have our x-axis. And then we have our y-axis. So this is zero. Over here is L. Okay. So what we have is P over here. All right. So the shear force, the maximum, so on the vertical scale is shear force V. Right. And then this is our shear force diagram. Okay. It's constant. It goes up at zero, it goes up to P. It goes constant until it reaches L. And it comes down to zero. Okay. So down here, we realize that our V max is equal to P. Okay. So that is our shear force diagram. Then the next one that we're going to construct is known as our bending moment diagram. So a bending moment diagram. So again, we have our X over here. And then we have our bending moment M. Right. Again, we have zero. And then we have L. And we realize that our bending moment will be maximum where the distance x is equal to zero. Okay. So this is our uh, P L. Okay. Now, why is it on the negative P L side and not positive? Okay. I can I can briefly explain uh, to you uh, why. Because based on deformation pattern. If your structure is deformed in a smiling face, it is positive bending moment. If it's set face, it is a negative bending moment. Later on, you'll see that our structure is deformed in the set face uh, mode. Okay. Now, I'm going to tell or uh, introduce to you two formulas. Okay. So we are going to focus on shear force. Okay, we're going to focus on shear force. Okay, so we can get our shear flow and then we can get our shearing stress. Okay, so the shear flow I'll, I'll, I'll write to you, I'll, I'll write to you the, 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 the formula first, then later on I'll explain what is it physically. Okay. So the shear flow, the formula is equal to Q is equal to VQ over I. Okay. So as I said, there's there's two big formulas in this chapter, but it's one of the most difficult topic. Okay. <laughs> two formula only, but so difficult. Okay. And if you look at the units, okay. Okay, uh, Q is our shear flow. And when the name implies flow, okay, you can take it like an analysis like fluid flow, like how fluid will flow. Literally, okay, how fluid will flow. Okay. B V is our shear force. 